Hola mi gente, soy señor Boylan, hoy vamos a aprender la química Just kidding! Hey what's up my chemistry people, it is Mr. Boylan And today, what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to explain how the lab process of calorimetry Calorimetry Can be used to determine the change in heat energy during a chemical reaction or phase change As always, breaking it down a little bit Today the first thing we're gonna do is define Calorimetry. Calorimetry. Dos, we are going to then apply the law of conservation of energy to calorimetry. Calorimetry. And then numero three, we are going to apply the formula for heat. Q equals MC delta T to calorimetry. Calorimetry data. Okay, so first things first, what the heck is calorimetry? It is an experimental technique used to measure the change in energy of a chemical reaction or phase change. Now, for those of you who habla espanol, I like to think of calor, which means basically heat, to help me better understand what calorimetry is all about. Now, if you don't habla espanol, here's a quick tutorial. When I was trying to learn espanol, I would watch these telenovelas with my host mom. One of them was Pasión de Gavilanes. And every time we finished watching them, my host mom would always turn to me and be like, ay, que hace mucho calor, no? And I'd be like, Pues claro. Anyway, if you have no idea what I'm talking about in Espanol, you're gonna have to figure out another way to remember that when we're talking about calorimetry, we are talking about measuring changes in heat energy. Calorimetry. Now, when you are talking about doing a calorimetry experiment in the lab, generally you need some sort of calorimeter, which is just a highly insulated device. Boom, you see a virtual one on your screen. And really, there's only two things that you need to do when you are performing a calorimetry experiment. You need to, one, put your chemical reaction or phase change in contact with a water bath, and two, you need to simply recognize that the law of conservation of energy means that if you can determine the temperature change of the water bath, you can then calculate the energy change of the water bath using the Q equals MC delta T formula and applying that law of conservation of energy, you can then tell how much heat was given off or absorbed by your chemical reaction or phase change. Okay, so some important things to keep in mind when we talk about calorimetry. Calorimetry. Uh, first, you simply need to recognize that the energy change in the heat bath or your water bath is going to be the same amount of energy, so the same magnitude as the chemical reaction or phase change, just with the opposite sign. And again, the assumption behind the science of calorimetry is that the energy gained or lost by the water or your heat bath is equal to the energy lost or gained by the object or reaction under study. So just a couple of assumptions then that you need to be able to make. So you need to be able to recognize that thanks to the law of conservation of energy, you can make the following assumptions in equation format. The positive Q of one of the things, either your water bath or your substance, is equal to the negative Q of the other thing. In other words, the energy absorbed with that positive Q value is equal to the energy released, which is that negative Q value. And because Q is equal to MC delta T, we can then further extrapolate the relationship that you see on your screen there, where the positive of the mass times specific heat times temperature change is equal to the negative of the mass times the specific heat times the temperature change of the other thing. Now, because our heat bath is typically going to be a water bath, the only specific heat of the millions of specific heats out there that you have to commit to memory is the specific heat of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, which remember is a rather high specific heat. It takes a lot of energy to heat up a gram of water one degree Celsius. Okay, and you are going to most commonly in our class work with coffee cup calorimeters where we use styrofoam cups. And these do a surprisingly good job of insulating our reaction and water bath and preventing heat loss to the surroundings. However, you should be aware that there are such things called bomb calorimeters, which do a much better job at insulating 
a reaction or phase change and reducing the heat loss to the surroundings. As you take a look at your notes, you got an illustration of both a coffee cup calorimeter and a bomb calorimeter. A lot of the same components, again, just recognize that that bomb calorimeter is gonna just insulate better and give us a little bit better data. Okay, and that's it for this video. Pretty short and pretty sweet. Take a look at those guided practice problems so you can get a better understanding of how we're going to apply these concepts in the lab.